Welcome back to Free Arts Academy, where art is for everyone. This is episode three of Ask an Artist. Today's question is, how can I paint reflections on water? Painting water is an enviable skill. We as artists are usually attempting to create a three-dimensional world on a two-dimensional surface. In order to trick the eye when painting landscapes, we play with things like dimension and depth to create realism. It pays to visualize water in artwork by looking up examples by master artists through history. Looking to the masters is a great way to try and understand any visual aspect of painting. Let's take a peek at how famous Impressionist painter Claude Monet painted reflections on water. This painting was created by Claude Monet in 1874. It's an oil painting on canvas. There's two sailboats and a small canoe floating down a serene waterway in the middle of a sunny afternoon. We can see that there's a sprawling sky, an arched footbridge, and calm, ripply water below. Here are some things to consider when painting reflections on water. Where's your light source coming from? Account for the natural movement of water, including ripples and waves. Consider the color of the object that's being reflected. Considering these thoughts, let's look at this master artwork by Claude Monet once more. First, let's consider that this painting is seemingly a snapshot from the middle of the day and that the water source is presumably a quickly moving waterway. This water is flowing from our left to our right and the pair of sailboats is headed down the river. Both are approaching an arched bridge where there are a few onlookers admiring the boats. When thinking about where the light source is coming from, Notice that the water under the bridge has a darker hue just in front of it and that the angle of the shadow being cast from the boats is similar to that of the bridge's shadow. It's important to keep the shadow's features somewhat consistent for this reason. Monet does a fantastic job here of creating movement within the water using tiny ripples and peaks within the waterway. Notice that the water is not only moving, but reflecting the color of the boats and the bridge back onto the surface of the water. For this reason, water reflections are not always simply blue or darker blue. Let's look at another example of painting water reflections from art history. This artwork is by Arthur K. Willick Jr. and was created in 1670. This painting shows us a more narrow and possibly slower moving waterway, complete with boats and another footbridge. This time, trees are lining the water on both sides and the time of day looks to be late morning or afternoon working into dusk. It seems that the boats are tied up and not moving anywhere and the trees look unaffected by wind. The sky is beautifully blue. Considering that our light source is the sun, we know that light is showing up in this image at an angle, which affects our shadows. When painting reflections on still water, an item to remember is that the image of what's being reflected will be flipped upside down. Another thing to consider is that the water itself will have its own hue, which will distort the natural color of the image being reflected. Consider these things when painting water reflections. Which direction is your light source coming from? Be sure to account for the natural movement of water, including ripples and waves. Always consider the color of the object being reflected onto water. And know that still water reflections differ from those in fast moving water. For more arts, crafts, and painting videos just like this, please subscribe to our channel. Please visit our website, freeartsacademy.com where you can download your essential painting supply guide and paintbrush guide for beginners.